Trump has won again. We had a reprieve for four years and now he's back. What does that mean? Who knows? It's going to be a huge difference in immigration. It's going to be a huge difference in immigration courts, in family. What it means for our country. Good to be here and be back. When it comes to immigration, Donald Trump and Kamala Harris are worlds apart. Trump has echoed the words of Adolf Hitler, claiming that immigrants are poisoning the blood of the United States. And it's true. They're destroying the blood of our country. That's what they're doing. They're destroying our country. While Harris has shown empathy for asylum seekers. Most people don't want to leave home. And when they do, it is usually because either they are fleeing some type of harm or they cannot take care of the simple and basic needs of their family by staying where they are. It's estimated there are some 11 million people living illegally in the U.S., 7 million of whom are known to the government. During his first term as president, Trump enacted travel bans on Muslim-majority countries, implemented a policy of separating children from their families at the southern border, and made some advances reinforcing a wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. But if he's elected to a second term, Trump and his allies are promising to go much further, vowing to facilitate mass deportations, using the U.S. military to round up millions of immigrants and send them back to their countries of origin. And they do come from prisons and mental institutions, and they are terrorists, and we're going to be paying a price, and it will be the largest deportation in the history of our country. For her part, Kamala Harris has tried to focus on what she calls root causes of the immigration crisis. As vice president, she traveled to countries such as Guatemala, where she came under some criticism from progressives in her party when she warned would-be migrants that they would be turned back at the border. I want to be clear to folks in this region who are thinking about making that dangerous trek to the United States-Mexico border. Do not come. Although it was an issue in her portfolio, Republicans have falsely claimed that Harris served as President Biden's border czar. But they have correctly pointed to a record number of illegal crossings of the U.S.-Mexico border in the last three years. However, those numbers have plunged dramatically since June, when President Biden issued an executive order to effectively shut the border to migrants seeking asylum when crossings exceed 2,500 per day. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing fine. Now, Donald Trump is now the 47th president of the United States of America. Now, he actually promised to deport some illegal migrants. Now, Jamaicans are worried about this and people are talking about this in the Caribbean. Now, I want you to watch some of the crazy reactions and whatever is going on in the world since it's just one month before the deportation, mass deportation starts taking place. Thank you so much. It says mass deportations now. Mass deportations now. That is the kind of policy that is alarming, even cruel, even un-American to folks on the left. And that is the intended effect. Someone I spoke to just a moment ago said it's going to make heads explode. And you may wonder, is that where the Republican Party is today? I did a little digging. I can tell you from my reporting during the primary season talking to voters, the answer is absolutely yes. And the answer from pollsters is absolutely yes. Three out of four Republicans want immigration to decline in America, and they believe that immigration brings in drugs, brings in crime, and makes the economy worse, even, quote, reduces social and moral values. On top of that, a full 80 percent of Republicans, according to CBS News' own polling, agree with Donald Trump when he says that illegal immigration is poisoning the blood of the country. After Donald Trump's victory, thousands of Americans are planning to pack their bags and move abroad. Google search data shows U.S. citizens are actively researching how to move to Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. Among these people could be Hollywood celebrities like Sharon Stone, Cher, and Jimmy Kimmel, all of whom declared they would leave the country rather than live under a second Trump presidency. Our next report brings you more. President-elect Donald Trump's victory wasn't a happy ending for everyone after all. While some saw his re-election as a personal win, others expressed fear about America's future and declared the Republicans' triumph a war on women. 
With Donald Trump set to begin his second presidency next January, scores of Americans are now planning to pack their bags and move to a different country. Recent Google search data shows just that. Americans are worried about Trump's apparent threat to democracy and are now showing interest in moving to Canada, New Zealand and Australia. As the polls closed in the U.S. East Coast on Election Day, Google searches for Move to New Zealand jumped nearly 2,000 percent. That too, only within 24 hours. Meanwhile, a similar search for Canada surged over 1,200 percent. And the one for Australia climbed over 800 percent. A Google official says that after the president-elect's win, searches about migrating to these three countries hit an all-time high. America's very same sentiment was also reflected upon New Zealand's immigration website. The site recorded around 25,000 new US-based users the day Donald Trump delivered his victory speech. The same day last year, only 1,500 Americans visited the website. Among the people planning to move abroad is a host of Hollywood celebrities who, before the election, went as far as to declare that they would rather leave than live under Trump's rule. One of them is singer and actor Cher, who said she almost got an ulcer the last time Trump won. Another is actor Sharon Stone, who is considering a house in Italy. Game of Thrones star Sophie Turner also said that if Trump returns to power, she will get out and move to her home country, the United Kingdom. Actor America Ferreira, too, is planning to start a new life with her husband in the United Kingdom. After the results, a teary-eyed TV host, Jimmy Kimmel, also talked about packing up and exiting the United States, adding a comedic tone to an otherwise serious sentiment. Of course, it's too early to predict how many Americans will actually move abroad and how many will decide to brave a second Trump presidency. But what we do know is that Donald Trump is back, and this time with a more powerful mandate. to the United States. The caravan, which began earlier this week with around 3,000 migrants, has now dwindled to just half after Donald Trump won re-election. We wanted to get to the United States. Now that Trump won, we do not know what to do. May it be God's will, since we are taking this course, that we have to arrive, even if it is to knock on the door, to see if they open it for us. I don't know what to do anymore, because we left a very terrible regime. Returning to Venezuela is like being shot in the head. Donald Trump doesn't like Latinos. Donald Trump said he was going to remove all Latinos from the United States, a massive deportation. So now it's going to be harder to get in. There are going to be new laws, new regulations, new rules, and now it's going to be harder for us Latinos to get there. In his winning speech, the president-elect reiterated his commitment to seal the borders, insisting that only legal immigration would be allowed. The president-elect's plan could further impose limitations on Biden-era programs like humanitarian parole and temporary protected status that temporarily allow some migrants to remain in the United States. We have a country that needs help, and it needs help very badly. We're going to fix our borders. We're going to fix everything about our country. And we made history for a reason. For migrants who use social media platforms like Telegram to track the U.S. immigration policies, the election outcome has dampened their hopes severely. Several expressed frustration, with some saying, that had there been a woman president like Claudia Scheinbaum, their lives would take a different trajectory. I wanted them to elect a woman in the United States elections just as we did here. That way they would have seen eye to eye because Mr. Trump is arbitrary, misogynist, racist. 
Now, throughout the campaign, Donald Trump vowed to complete his border wall and deport millions of illegal immigrants. He's even promised to hire an additional 10,000 Border Patrol agents and impose tougher restrictions on asylum. So in order to meet the goal of hiring 10,000 new agents, we need the agents. We, have to, we need them badly. And keeping our incredible veteran agents on the force. Don't leave us. A post-election YouGov survey shows that Donald Trump has the support of 53 percent of Americans on immigration matters, compared to just 45 percent for Vice President Kamala Harris. As of now, the reality for migrants remains uncertain as they weigh their next steps, with many deciding to give up on their chances of crossing into the United States. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Vantage, live from the White House. America is Trump country again. He will be the 47th president of the United States of America. They're live from the White House, soon to be the new residence of Donald Trump. It was also here that Donald Trump brokered the Abraham Accords. So the voters have a legitimate question in their minds. If those presidents could do it, why not Joe Biden? The Arab voters want to punish the Democrats for supporting Israel. Joe Biden's shadow looms large over this election and Kamala Harris may end up paying the price for it. This Trump hat, it says, President Trump save America. But this hat is made in China. And this is the Chinese interference that Americans must be investigating. But off late, Donald Trump and the Republicans have made some gains. And the biggest reason for that is illegal immigration. This is more than just a march, they say. This is a demand for accountability. The excitement, the tension is palpable. You can see the security presence. You can see the number of police cars, government buildings like these again, again fenced up. We are at Harvard University, the alma mater of Kamala Harris. As the night progressed, uh, numbers came in thick and fast, and Donald Trump was soon declared the winner. It's been called a... Now, we all know the Trump effect on the masses that are living in the U.S. Now... Jamaicans have been reacting to the news that um, Donald Trump won the election and that Kamala Harris, one of their own, lost to him. Now, people have been saying a lot of things. We've seen the celebrity meltdowns happening all, all around the globe. People are not, maybe some people are not happy and others are happy because they think that Trump will save the economy of the U.S. and the entire world. Now, some people believe that he's the best candidate and he's, he has won and this means good for the world because he's going to make sure the wars that are happening between Israel and Iran plus Iraq are going to come down and the war between Ukraine and Russia, which has lasted for three years, is also going to come down. But so many things are happening and people are talking about this. One, what's the effect of Trump winning uh, to Jamaica? Are Jamaicans going to enjoy his win? Are Jamaicans going to actually benefit from his victory? Now, we know uh, Trump is one of those presidents who doesn't like to meddle with other countries' business. He may, he, he, uh, he actually wants to make the u.s work fast before interfering with the rest of the world unlike democrats who have always in a way or the other influenced the whole world through uh through diplomatic relations and all that now trump promised when he gets to power the first um uh the first executive order he's going to sign is to deport the illegal immigrants who are living in the U.S. Now, so many countries are going to be uh, to be affected by this because uh, to be a legal migrant in the U.S. really takes uh, quite documents uh, to make sure that you become a legal citizen. And in this case, most people do have shortcuts to become or to work in the U.S. And the Biden, Kamala Harris are. Uh, a government did not actually did not actually go so much into immigration and all that to mean the borders were actually not that strict and people could move in at any time to go and work in the u.s though this one uh, really put uh, the u.s security at a threat but some people benefited with this and some countries that are close to the u.s people benefited with this 
Now, we are here talking about the same thing that um, he promised during the election. And we saw it in 2017, 2018, and 2020, plus 2019, when he was actually deporting some of the immigrants back to their country. And people are actually speculating that he's going to do that. And masses, masses of people are going to be deported back to their countries for reasons really known to him. He wants a U.S. to remain with legal people who are actually citizens of that country and who in one way or the other have work visas or permits in that country. So how is Jamaica going to be affected? How is the Caribbean going to be affected? Now, there are countries that are going to be affected directly. Countries like the Venezuela, because when people are fighting in the Venezuela, when people are fighting back, when we had troubles in the Colombia, people are actually moving to the other side of the world. And when I say that, I mean in the U.S., and some of the U.S. Um, citizens were not feeling good about this. They had some mixed up reactions. Some felt like uh, people seeking asylum in their own country put their country at a risk, at a security risk. But while others were not at all bothered by this. But one of the major thing that the policies that um, the, Rep the Republicans have always stood for is one legality how legal are you in the u.s and what are you doing in the u.s they do not want a u.s to be a dumping site for people from their country that refugees can just run or people seeking asylum can just run to that country because that actually threats uh, puts their security at a threat now is yet to be sworn into power in january but what are the significance of his leadership what are the effects how are people going to uh, to benefit now some uh, some two years back we saw uh, the jamaican government trying to sign deals with the u.s government and the prime minister andrew holness did sign some agreement and a memorandum of understanding between the two countries and kamala harris kamala harris was was there to witness it and she gave a speech and said that uh, the biden administration is actually going to make sure that people of jamaica benefit from their government that uh, jamaica and the u.s is going to work hand in hand fast to see democracy thrive well to see the economy the economy thrive well and all those other things and this most jamaicans living in the diaspora got assured and they really saw it as a good chance for Kamala Harris to ascend to power because she comes from their country and when someone from your country ascends to power you feel like you are at home those who live in the US will have felt like they are at home but nevertheless this has actually not happened and uh, we've seen the Trump policies and some of them are not actually favoring black people living in the U.S. as some will face deportation as early as he takes the mantle of power coming January. So uh, Google actually released their data that people have actually been Googled. The most Googled thing in the U.S. right now is how to exit U.S. It's how actually to get out of the U.S. And some of the countries people are actually willing to go to is Australia, New Zealand, and so many other countries. But what is really, what's the impact of this? Is this going to serve U.S. the best that they have never seen in the last few years? Is this going to help the U.S. residents or the U.S. citizens to get jobs? Because some of the U.S citizens who voted donald trump were actually saying that they voted him because some of the immigrants illegal immigrants have come to their country taken their jobs taken their chances to work and they have no jobs the economy is too bad and they want him to deport them and reclaim the economy of uh, of 
did the U.S. reclaim the glory, the lost glory of the U.S.? And that's when we get uh, uh, the motto, uh, MAGA, Make America Great Again, uh, which was widely used by the Republicans uh, during the elections. And what's the role, actually, of uh, some of the people who are in the campaign trail? who were actually advocating for Trump's policies uh, that included deportation of people, of illegal migrants. People have been talking about this and we are yet to see a Trump do it. So we are here, we just have one month and he will be sworn into power to become the 47th president of the US. So let's actually hope everything is going to be fine and no people are going to be hurt that even if it's going to happen, it is going to happen in an orderly manner and in a very democratic and constitutional manner that no one is going to be thrown out just like an animal. So, brothers and sisters who are living in the U.S., make sure you have the legal documents before Donald Trump is sworn into power because he promised to deport. And one thing I know about Donald Trump, he actually do stand with his word when he says it he means it and come january we might see some of crazy things happening around the globe when people are being deported some have nowhere to go because they were seeking political asylum so brothers and sisters get your documents ready just be ready get your savings if anything goes wrong you are not harmed or you are not do you do not lose your life during the process Thank you so much for having taken your time. I wish you all well. Have a great, great weekend and a great day. Continue uh, staying and living in peace because peace, love, and harmony has always been my slogan in this channel. Thank you so much.